All right, so let's get into it. What is TypeScript? First and the most obvious thing is that it's a programming language. Well, it's a free and open source programming language. It was created by Microsoft and it's still kind of being maintained by Microsoft even though it's, a, it's an open source project. The question, what does TypeScript is fairly simple to answer, but the question, why TypeScript requires some explanation. In order to understand why TypeScript was created, you need to understand some problems with another programming language, a related programming language called JavaScript. What are some problems with JavaScript? I think the challenge with JavaScript is that it was created many, many years ago for a completely different purpose. It was created to be a simple, lightweight, easy to learn, easy to get started language that was meant to do some basic DOM manipulation for HTML web pages, static HTML web pages. And I'm pretty sure the creator of JavaScript at the time would not have imagined the kind of adoption, the kind of complexity that JavaScript drives uh, web applications today. Uh, so what happens is there are certain nuances to the JavaScript programming language. There were certain decisions that were taken during the language creation time that haven't aged well. Uh, there are certain quirks in the language as resulting from those decisions. I'm going to showcase some of the quirks in the language now with just JavaScript, right? We're not talking about TypeScript. I'll show you some of the quirks, some of the uh, weirdness in JavaScript, and uh, just keep that in mind. And if you're wondering why is this guy talking about JavaScript in a TypeScript course, well, TypeScript attempts to address a lot of these quirks, a lot of these weirdness, and there are features which kind of tackle these uh, quirks. So remember these quirks in JavaScript that I'm going to show you right now. When we talk about TypeScript later, I'm going to call back to these quirks, uh, kind of like a flashback in a movie. So you better remember this, take notes. We will look at what TypeScript does to solve these problems later. All right, so here's the developer tools open in my Chrome browser. I can execute random JavaScript statements and have them show me the output. So let's look at some of the problems with JavaScript. The first thing I'm going to talk about is a lack of a typing system. There's no type checks and there's no enforcement of typing. For example, let's say I have a var a and uh, this is a variable. I can assign the number 10 to a. I can assign a string hello to a. It all works fine. There is no way I can restrict a to contain values that belong to a particular type. I cannot say a needs to be a number only or a needs to be a string only, for example. This is a problem not just for primitive types, but also for objects. I can say a equals an empty object. I can create an object of something else, a different structure, and it's all going to work fine. I can make some other structure here and JavaScript will not stop me. The additional problem is if you have written code like this and you actually intend to make a to be a number only variable, there's no way you can check. Uh, you deploy it at runtime and everything works fine. If you have assigned some other data type to a, JavaScript doesn't complain. It's only when you assume a to be a number and do something with it that only works with numbers and it happens to be something else, that's when JavaScript complains. So it's not very helpful when you're developing. The second problem that I want to talk about is relating to function arguments. Now, let's say I have a function. Um, I'm going to call that add, which takes in two numbers, and then it returns the sum of those two numbers. Simple enough. I can call add on one and two and it's going to return three. Now, what happens if I call add with just one argument? It's going to work fine. JavaScript is not going to complain, but the function is going to fail. It's going to get not a number because when a function is called without the required number of arguments, the arguments that are missing are actually substituted with undefined. So add here is trying to add one to undefined, and which is why we get not a number. Again, not very helpful, but there's really nothing you can do to prevent JavaScript from doing this. What's also funny is I can actually do add one, two, three, and this is going to work fine too. Three is essentially ignored. So you can 
have different arguments being passed to a function and JavaScript doesn't care. It just picks what it needs and then proceeds executing silently. Again, not very helpful when you're working on a large code base and you want to enforce that the consumers of your function are passing in the right arguments. The third problem I want to talk about is relating to objects and how you cannot enforce the structure of objects. Let's say I have a var person equals, let's say I give a, a property, first name. This is an object which contains two properties, first name and last name. I can print that object and here you go. Now, what if I want to make sure that nobody adds any other properties to it? Now, let's say somebody comes along and says person dot foo equals 10. Now, person is going to have a new property called foo. And there's really nothing you can do to prevent somebody from doing this. Objects are loosely structured. There's no concept of a template. There's no concept of a class in JavaScript. Well, there is technically a concept of a class in JavaScript, but that doesn't really do much to enforce member variable structure like we would expect to in some of the other programming languages, which are strictly class-based. So this is a problem, and this becomes more of a problem when you're given an object that you are not sure how it was constructed. Let's say somebody gives you an object and says there are these many properties in it. How do you know? You really cannot tell for sure. The only thing you can do is examine those properties and find out if they really have a value. You have to check if the value of the property is undefined or if it's something else. There's really no way somebody can give you an object and guarantee that there are a certain set of properties there. This is gonna be a problem again because objects are loosely structured in JavaScript. 